Hi, I'm Rashid. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm from the Communications and Community um, Committee here at BHC, and I'm delighted to be with Sam, who's currently co-chair of the Membership Committee. Sam, thank you so much for joining me. A real, real pleasure, Rashid. Thank you for asking. Um, for those people that don't know me, I'm, as you say, co-chair on the Membership Subcommittee, and in my day job, I'm a drama therapist. Now, lots of people won't know what that is, Rashid. I mean, do you know what that is, Rashid? Do you know, when, only when you told me the other day, I learned more about it because I thought yeah. it was how it sounded, that you're using drama to help people to gain therapeutic benefits. But there's more to it than that. So if you want to talk people through it. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting phrase, drama therapy, because in a way, it's, it's a metaphor for life, really. We all go through dramas and uh, drama therapists are usually artists who have had a, an initial interest in training and perhaps a profession in the theatre and then go on and find that for themselves theatre has been therapeutic and that in working clinically, which you have to train to do, it's, it's usually a, a, an MA, three years, um, uh, in going on and finding out about how one can use theatre practices to help people therapeutically. What then seems to happen with the, with the strange phrase drama therapist is that people kind of, people can't really equate drama with real life, although it's, it, you know, it's quite a clear metaphor. Mm. And obviously people sometimes hear the word therapist and they think, oh, oh no, oh no. So I guess for me, it's, it's quite tricky describing drama therapy, drama therapy, but I like to sort of say, it's about giving people a way to work with their mental health or any other um, abilities that come up for them in terms of life with um, somebody that's an active practitioner. Mm -hmm. So it's a little different to talking traditional therapy. Mm -hmm. I, like it. I like what you're saying, Sam, and actually the reason why I thought it'd be brilliant for you to join me on this call is for those mm -hmm. who don't mean but my background is a life coach to help people who've been in their lives and their careers. Yeah. In their relationships lots of people right now are going through a bit of a, a of a life challenge an unusual one a very rare one in that lots of people find themselves we find ourselves perhaps stuck indoors perhaps mm -hmm. able to go out once a day it might even get more serious than that so people will be needing perhaps all sorts of tips and techniques in terms of how to manage um, their new routine and also how to crucially um, manage the things that you've just touched on which is really their mind and their mental health their emotional health at this particular yeah time. yes so, so do you want to just share what your first thoughts um for this for people right now including and that's going to of course include some people who who have haven't got any background in having those kind of challenges and perhaps people who have had ups and downs in terms of their emotional their mental health yeah, I think the first thing to acknowledge, Rashid, is that you and I are human. So we're also part of, of, of the, the spectrum, really, of people. We're all trying to cope in these new times. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it is an extraordinarily new time. It is a place of unknowns. And so all of us are going in and out of feeling quite different about ourselves. And I guess... I and you uh, and BHC generally, we're, we're really wanting to extend a helping hand to those people that perhaps don't come from a mental health background like you and I, um, and wanting to pass on some strategies. I can't really remember your question as I'm yeah. talking. Oh no, that's absolutely fine. fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but actually... on what we're what we're trying to do here yeah well you've led us nicely into that because it's about those strategies so imagine now so i'm stuck at home um and what should i do and i guess the scenario is going to be different there's going to be those people who are at home and they live by themselves yeah um, and perhaps they can be just stuck with their own company and i guess there's going to be other people who are living with different people let's start yeah. with the people who are by themselves and let's say that they perhaps have been working before it's newer to them being stuck by themselves or that they they can't go and see their friends any top tips that you would say first of all for the person who's feeling isolated yes i think i think the first top tip is to let people know that um it's not unusual to be feeling what you're feeling mm. uh, and i say that as a human not as a therapist mm. I, um i think it's really important to acknowledge that because when you are on your own we can often imagine that nobody else is feeling like this mm. so that's the first thing to say that you know whatever you're feeling is what you're feeling and that's mm. okay um and i think uh, there is something about um 
acknowledging when you're on your own that conversation um, with others is, you know, suddenly it can feel like it, it, it has disappeared and that's huge. And so being able to have a conversation with somebody, not particularly because, you know, necessarily because you're feeling frantic, but just because human contact is so very, very important. I think That's this is key, isn't it, Sam? This bit yeah. here that we're talking about is powerful and key. With social beings, this ability to connect yeah. with people. So I guess it's that if you've got friends, if you've got family and connections, yeah. pick up the phone. Absolutely. People might be discovering new things like that we're having this conversation on Zoom. Whatever technology works for you, it could be the phone, yeah. it could be WhatsApp, whatever, yeah. FaceTime, whatever, have those com conversations. Yeah, stay in touch and I think the other strategy that feels really important for me personally is to have a routine. So I'm trying really, really hard to, particularly on weekdays, to stick to a kind of work routine. So I'm getting up, I'm doing my little mini workout, which I do every morning. I'm having a shower, having a decent breakfast. I'm getting dressed. Now that can feel quite strange at this time, getting dressed. Why do I need to get dressed? Well, I need to get dressed because it's one of the things that I do in my normal everyday work life. So I'm getting dressed and I have a plan and the plan is often when I'll work, um, whatever it is I'm doing, whether it's creative work or actually doing work online, um, I'll work in the morning, then I'll have a lunch, you know, break and I'll, I'll prepare a nice lunch for myself. And then I'll decide, well, how long do I feel able to do a bit of work for in the afternoon. So that's my routine, but everyone will have a, a very different routine. And if you're not working or not being required to work from home, then your routine's going to feel very different. But a routine is key all the same. So just cool. sort of take some time to work out what that might look like for yourself. And it might be as simple as breakfast times, lunch times, um, dinner times, exercise in the morning, dance in the afternoon, bit of drawing in the afternoon or stepping out into the balcony, whatever it is that comes up for you as something that makes you feel good, makes you feel like you're still engaging in life in a creative way, in a helpful way. Get it down, put it on paper, put it somewhere where you can see it and try and stick to it as much as possible. I think that's wonderful, absolutely magical advice. And I was just thinking, Sam, of the, mm -hmm. people, you know, there might be some people during this time where perhaps their health or mobility is, is an issue, but I feel that any kind of movement, even if it's moving from one room to another, even if it's tidying things up, shifting things from one, just getting yourself moving, getting the body moving is incredibly important. Doing whatever it is that you can do, isn't it? That's what's key here. Yeah, are you sure you're not a drama therapist? Which <laughs> is? Well, I'm a okay with the background in singing and performing. So, but this stuff, um, you know, Sam, I'm so glad you're here because this stuff is so dear to my heart. And often yeah. the thing that strikes me about this, Sam, is often for any of us, these are things that we're not necessarily taught about. You know, how is it you can um, look after your general well being? How, what kind yeah. of things are you going to manage yeah. your routine? So, the things you're saying are priceless. And yet, um, I mean, you're right, we don't generally talk about them because they seem so simple. And actually they are things that we know, if we look inwards, we actually know, well, what do I need to do? Movement is always the very first thing that we often think about, but somehow we don't rate it as, as being something that's really important. But I, you know, if I say nothing else, I want to say move, move, move. Whether that's in a chair, mm. move, moving your arms, moving your shoulders, moving your feet, putting on a little bit of music, or, or just stretching and doing an, an exaggerated yawn. You know, I'm always doing an exaggerated yawn. I'm always sort of expressing my voice and doing little silly things with my voice just to keep moving my voice, to keep moving physically. It's really key, whether you're sitting or whether you're standing. Doesn't what you're saying is wonderful. Just move, move, move. You know what, it's wonderful because I think that what you're saying there now is bringing me on to a couple of other things I think would be nice for us to talk about. You, yeah. you, you've touched on this thing about hobbies and interests. Now, whilst we're stuck indoors, it's a great opportunity for us to, first thing that people often feel is, oh, I'm bored or I'm stuck or I'm isolated. Mm -hmm. and there can be all sorts of things that we can do. So I guess for people who are lucky enough, whether it is that you've got books, whether it is that you've got music, whether it is that mm -hmm. you've used mm -hmm. to play the piano or you've got a guitar or you've got some paintbrushes or pencils, 
it's a great opportunity, isn't it, Sam, to connect to old hobbies or perhaps find new ones, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, in, my, in my drama therapy head and role, I often refer to creativity as a first medicine. It's one of the things that we've always done as humans. Mm. You know, you go back to the campfire, you think about those times when humans sat around together, sharing stories, perhaps doing drawings in the cave, drawings as simple as, as your handprint and, and, and enjoying that process of being with your hand. Think about those times when perhaps you were younger, things that you used to do that you might not have had time for recently. I mean, mm. in a way, it's not, um, you know, it, it, it's not quite accurate to say that Corona might be a gift, but, but I sort of want to say, actually for some of us, it's given us more time to return to those things that we used to love doing. I think the important thing about creativity, particularly in, in modern times, is not to, not to get into the mindset of being an inner critic. Allow yourself to draw, allow yourself to move, allow yourself to write, allow yourself to do whatever it is you want to do without being critical. Don't mm -hmm. judge it, mm -hmm. just give yourself that time. Mm. And that time is about being present. Mm -hmm. That's really crucial with creativity. It allows us to be in the moment. The same with movement. It takes us away from, you know, thinking about perhaps past times when we were feeling really low. It brings us into the here and now. And it reminds us that doing whatever we're doing makes us feel good in that moment. And we can I do it at whatever time of the day we want to. That's really powerful. Um, you know, Sam, because I'm thinking that it can also be incredibly great, isn't it, for, um, again, going back to that thing about mental health, perhaps mm -hmm. um, to, to draw how you're feeling, to write down how you think, to journal, to write poetry, to put Definitely. on the music that makes you happy or sad or that allows you to connect with those emotions. And, and simple things can be creative. Lots of people feel that they're not creative. It might be you moving around the furniture in your house that's creative. Maybe you're lucky enough oh, to have a yeah. garden, putting things out. Can, yeah. it's, it's all creativity, right? It's all creativity, you know, rearranging your bookshelf, um, as you say, rearranging your furniture, thinking about um, all of those things that you haven't had time to do, um, like decluttering, mm -hmm. you know, Lord knows all of us need to declutter, we've never got the time to do it, that is a creative act, mm -hmm. so it's not just about being, a, being a, an artist, it's, it's about sort of improvising and thinking, well, what can I do, how can I use this time? So mm. yes, you're absolutely right. I think that's wonderful. And you know, one of the other things that we were talking about when we were just chatting in advance about this before today, yeah, um, things that, that, like at the moment, I guess that, that for me, I would wear it, is that we want to have that blend between staying in touch, perhaps know it's what's going on TV or the news from time to time, but not getting too drawn in. So you were talking about the things like not too much TV, not too much news, yeah. not too much social media, right? Yeah, really, really key. I mean, for me personally, I check in with the news of the morning, you know, I put on the radio. Mm -hmm. I know I will probably listen to the news again in the evening, mm -hmm. just as a way of, of, of keeping in touch. But in my day, I don't really, I don't really listen to the news because I find it, I do find it overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And there's so much information out there. It kind of fills our head with, with dread and fear and panic. And obviously, as I was saying earlier, we're all human. We're all on the spectrum. So we all have, you know, we might feel slightly greyer one day. On those days, it's particularly key to think, well, I'm not going to listen to the radio today. I'm not going to put on the TV today. I'm going to do something else. And then the next day when we wake up slightly brighter and it's sunny outside, we can tune back in with the radio, you know. This is, you know, some of the things you're saying are such wonderful bits of gold dust here. Really, really, really it is. It really, really is. And I think that point that you make about going with the flow of how you feel on each particular yeah. is important. There'll be certain days where, let's say you've even, because we've talked about the routine, you might have a routine. I think the good thing about the routine is your mind, because for me, the mind needs a routine. The mind likes a plan. But if yeah. you wake up and you know what, you're feeling more tired and give yeah. yourself that extra half hour. If the body's saying rest, yes. give yourself that rest. If you feel that you need that extra time over lunch, have that. If you feel you need to reach out and make that phone call, to a friend reach out make that phone call yeah definitely definitely I mean in a way it's about I think mindfulness can be a, a, a bit of an intimidating phrase um, so you know I like to say well it's about it's about taking time to listen to what you need in that moment mm -hmm. and the other thing that's occurred to me in thinking about this Rashid that 
Sometimes it can be really difficult for us to be as kind to ourselves as we would choose to be with a neighbor. Mm. So I want to say to everyone, imagine in those moments that you are talking to your neighbor. What would you say to your neighbor in those times where you're feeling a little low or you don't want to get out to bed, mm. out of bed? Say to yourself, well, what would you say to a neighbor? You'd probably say, you know what? It's okay. Don't load the guilt on listen to yourself mm. there is innate wisdom within us mm. if we take the time to listen to stop to breathe just to focus on our breath coming in and out we'll actually begin to hear what we need in that moment and that's what we kind of need to keep keep doing and be kind be gentle you know we really allow ourselves to be where we are it's okay uh -huh. I think that what you're saying there again is, is really magical and I was just thinking as you were saying that, that being kind oneself, also be mindful, my tip would be when you're engaging with others, other people might be stressed, might be feeling short, so, so be mindful that sometimes other people might be going for a bad day too, so I think it never, there's never any harm in being just that extra little bit of, of kind. I'd also say I think that one thing that jumps out to me Sam is the importance of Try and be mindful about the people who you surround yourself with. This is going to be a time where you really want to be really encouraging and supportive. You might need to dial down those relationships with the people who may even have your best intention at heart, but if you feel that Brilliant. they back you down, then it might be that time to ease down or there might even be weeks where you're not able to speak to them because you need to be in a, in a good space. So don't feel bad about that. I think it's really important. Be aware of, I always see it that there's the time for yourself, having a good relationship with yourself, then the people nearest to you, I see it like, I call it like the inner circle, it's like a rowboat. Don't have people mm. knocking the boat in that rowboat. You want people <laughs> who are really supportive of you during those times. And I think the other thing that I wanted to just say, mm. and here Sam was the, the importance of, there is, if you're lucky enough to, um, let's say, to, to be able to go online or things like this, and I know not everybody will, mm. <clears throat> I just want to say, there's lots of, whilst we often fill up our lives with lots of, you know, silly stuff, there's all sorts of such nutritionist stuff, you know, all sorts of things for free. Um, and meditations, mindfulness, um, mm -hmm. documentaries, so much, be it, you've got TV or what have you, lots of people, if you're at home with kids and so on, lots of channels like the BBC are putting on lots of educational stuff. So really have the blend between the stuff, which is for your entertainment, that's important. You need the times where you're just having that escape, that's great. Mm -hmm. But there might be all sorts of stuff that you could learn. There might be new skills or things that you could learn, books, things online. Um, you know, YouTube is just one resource that's full of all sorts of stuff, those documentaries on people who've always inspired you. So find things that are really nourishing or inspiring. And it might be that you leave this period of time with new skills and new talents, with new knowledge about things. So is that opportunity you talked about? Yeah, yes. I mean, I, I, I totally agree with you. I think one of the things that I would say about going online, and I, I, I say this again from my own experience, I think it's quite tricky to go online and not find yourself an hour or two later still searching online for that one thing that you're looking for um, and almost getting sidetracked. So I think, I think one has to be quite focused. So if you think, oh, I'm looking for yoga, um, then I think just go to yoga and say to yourself, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do this search for maybe five minutes or 15 minutes and uh, check out something. And if it works for you, great, stick with it. Don't be tempted to sort of go into the mire, into the woods or whatever metaphor you'd like to use. And, and, and then find yourself half an hour, an hour later thinking, well, I've not done what I wanted to do. It can be so easy to be sort of drawn down a path or an advert will pop up. Um, so keep it quite boundaried, keep it quite focused. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's what I I'd like say to myself. I, I like that, Sam, because it's almost as though then with this plan, the time tables you talk about, you might give yourself that kind of almost like working or development time, even if you're not working yes. the time. And then there might be that time where it's entertainment. And that makes me think Lovely. about people who are stuck at home, let's say with, with loved ones or friends. I think I want to mm. just talk you about this. Be mindful, be kind to each other, all the things we've said before. You might need to even carve out little bits of space or time when different people are on the computer or on, allowed to watch TV. Definitely. Any yeah. Anything you have on things like that, Sam, because I'm sure you see it also yes. in your work. Yes. I mean, it, it, it's a different but similar challenge. If you're in a household that's um, full of lots of people, then 
it's as important to do that timetable, however informally it is, do that timetable, but do it together. So make it a kind of fun activity. And on that timetable, put down times alone, times together, time when laptop goes to one person, time when it's returned. It, you know, it can feel a little bit odd, but we're in odd times, aren't we? So let's allow ourselves to be odd. Get it down, because once you've got it down, it's so holding to be able to go back to that sheet of paper and think, oh, well, I've got, you know, I've got time with a laptop to look forward to this afternoon at, at 2 p.m. It's very, very clear for everyone. And then we, we avoid those kind of stressful places where we can end up feeling like we might be about to have an argument or we might need some time out. We all need time out. It's okay, whether you're mum, dad, brother, sister, you know, we all need time on our own. So it's really important to acknowledge it and, and to let yourselves have it, even if you're a, in a household. Of course, it's difficult if you've got very young babies. Um, that, that is difficult. But even in those times, perhaps it's having quiet time with baby and not with all siblings, for example. Um, perhaps it's having quiet time with music where you're, you know, singing or dancing with baby. So you're both having a, uh, a creative experience does that um, does that answer your question it really does i think those are really wonderful thoughts and i thought just to wrap up just a couple of things that strike me is and um, that thing about making do um in that what i mean by that is that often we often focus about what we don't have see what you do have in your home there might even be times who knows the internet go, might go down or there might be a problem mm. with that. see have you got books maybe you've got mm. old of paper and so there might be all sorts of things mm. that you've tucked away that in that bottom drawer you've got this and that see what you've got there or if you are lucky enough to be able to get bits of things i saw somebody the other day for example and they had a Maybe you've got an old skipping rope, maybe you've got an old workout video, maybe you've got, you know, there might be all sorts of bits and pieces that you that you have yeah. in a notebook that you could start to sketch in or what have you, or to yeah. a colouring book or you you start doing that collage again. Be Try and be creative, have fun, Make work with what you've got there. And you might be more surprised than you think. Reconnecting with the hobbies, maybe like the things like the sewing and you suddenly get out that bowl, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. bowl and the knitting needles. So, be really creative and go absolutely with the yeah i mean if you if you find that you you know you're you're suddenly without the internet um and you have old books at home or old magazines even you mentioned the word collage i love collage you know why not go through those magazines and and create a, a, a collage you might even and this might be going a little far for some people but i'll say it anyway you might decide that you create a family collage wall you might have space in your home or on a door where suddenly you are you're sticking up images or or creative writing or poems and inspiring poems where the whole family create this beautiful response to covid and it's about it's a response that's about empowering it's about recognizing that we all have this inner strength we all have it and on some days it can feel like it's not quite there as much as we want it to be but the more we engage with that little voice inside ourselves. The more we move, the more creative we are, the louder that voice becomes. So do it. Nothing is off bounds. Recycle. Do what you need to do. Reread an old book. I and definitely that. journal. I would recommend journaling. It's That's a, a really good one, isn't it? Because it can be a good one and anyone can do it. You know that thing about yeah. journaling on a computer whether it's on a piece of paper on a, a notebook or a favorite thing that, that that you really like i the one thing that i wanted to just touch on very briefly before we we close this this, this mm -hmm. program, um, was i think that where people might also be isolated from other family members if you're lucky enough to have be a phone or you have something like whatsapp or computer whatever yeah do those connecting times so something that i did with my family for the first time was that um we did um so we're for example doing this interview here on zoom which i hadn't mm -hmm. used much apart from for a couple of work things before but i realized that we had different family members in different places so i arranged for all the different bits, bits of family some we've got kids here some we've got kids there and then my sister was with my mum to mm -hmm. And we all at the same time had a family gathering. Mm. They went off and did their own thing, but it was a lo lovely opportunity. So I, I, I'm a big fan of the thing that the phone is great, especially for the people you know. But if you've also got that bit of the video on the FaceTime or on the phone or whatever, seeing each other's faces and each other's smiles 
there's an energetic additional connection there, isn't there, Sam? That's really important. Yeah, us yeah absolutely. And most of us, I think, if, if not all, have had experience of Skype um, these days. So it's, yeah, it, it, it's very, very empowering. And one of the things that I would also suggest, just to go back to that timetable, you know, it might be, I have friends that are now timetabling that once a week phone call in the evening to, to Nan and Granddad, whatever it is. So we can do the same. You know, you can just put that up on the timetable and know that, oh, on Wednesday, I'm going to be talking to so-and-so and I'm going to be seeing their face. And you know what else you can do? You can dress up. You know, you can get your outfit on. You can get, get you know, I've got my lipstick on, Rashi. I was rather excited about seeing you. And I found myself thinking, oh, no, I'm going to put my lipstick on. I'll, I'll put my earrings on. Uh, you know, I'm really going to use this as an opportunity to touch base with Rashid, but enjoy it at the same time time really that's being creative well, Sam, that's a really good point because also lots of people might be having things like birthdays at this time you could have the vet mm, mm. whatsapp the facetime where you can see each other be creative i like that thing we said nothing so be creative find out what works for you and also i, I just mm. think about and one thing's i've been mindful about thinking about those people who might just benefit from a call from you now of course i think particularly if we've got elder loved ones family um parents, loved ones, uncles, aunts, or what have you, or people we know are unwell, sick, or what have you. But also, I think just differing friends and differing situations or the people you're worried about their jobs. I just think everybody you know, there's no harm in just dropping that line to and saying, hi, thinking about you, how are you doing? Because I think that taking us back to where we began at this, and you made the point that, Sam, everybody could be struggling, albeit in different ways, with this yeah. yes. kind thoughtful dropping people a line is really really powerful yes yeah I want to thank I, you yes. so much and Sam I'm, what I'm hoping to do because you're so such a wonderful guest I'm hoping to just stop this particular recording and for us and then if we've got time and I know that somebody might be ringing at the doorbell the postman might be ringing the doorbell anytime you know what that's real life if they ring the doorbell I'll pause and then we'll get back together wonderful. so we're just going to sign off from this one and wish everybody well for, Sam from this particular recording I just wanted to us to just say farewell to everyone and, and um, let us know how you get on we're going to post this on our new YouTube channel yeah and website hopefully and let us know how you're getting on let us know in the newsletter and um, tell write to us in membership share with us yes what you're doing Pat. absolutely and give us your tips you know there will be things that we haven't said so give us your tips as well you know let's share yeah. we might have to do a part two we'll do a part we two might. with people's thoughts and their thoughts and so on well that could be lovely absolutely. see you soon Rashid see you soon bye